Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And as you can tell, we once again are outside on this beautiful August day and uh, recording this and, and praise the Lord for that. And I hope you guys, everyone watching is having a, a great day and I hope with Jesus Christ you can have even a better week. So anyway, let us begin. Uh, our worship today, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John. Our website is vicarjohn.com. Go to the top line on your browser and type that in. It should take you right there. At any point during the uh, worship time, uh, you can pause and play music, your favorite uh, hymns or praise songs or, or, uh, or whatever you want. Uh, and, uh, and here are some suggestions. First one, Oh, How I Love Jesus wonderful words of life <clears throat> and standing on the promises uh, some great great songs there that i love and uh, also we're going to pause in in uh, a few moments for our prayer time so please remember that uh, our prayer time is so very important uh, you need it and the people around you need it too so make sure you pray for for, for everyone that's, uh, that's around you so um, our title for today's sermon is are you hungry are you hungry and uh, we'll just check into that here in a few minutes and i'm not serving breakfast or anything so that's uh, that's uh, that's what it's going to be so anyway now we'll have the ringing in the hour of worship And let us open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do, and we just ask that you anoint us today with the Holy Spirit, that we might worship you, and only you, and if there's any bad spirits, Lord, we ask that you cast them out, cast them away from us. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, saying for thought for the week is, uh, deal with others others faults gently as gently as you as if they were your own i got to read that again i didn't do very well deal with others faults as gently as if they were your own deal with others faults as gently as 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 if they were your own so please remember that that's that's quite quite good words our call to worship today uh comes from psalm 111 various verses there Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. The full splendor and majesty in his work and his righteousness endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. His praise endures forever. What wonderful words those were. Pray, praise the Lord for that. Uh, we need these comforting words all the time. And, and uh, we're going to try to start something new next week, I think, uh, on, along those lines. So uh, now we come to our prayer time and, and God moments. Please remember that uh, as you're about going about in your world, wherever you are, that God is there with you. And just give him a thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mentally to yourself. It doesn't have to be anything great. Um, Although he'd like great too, but, but just, just acknowledge his presence wherever you happen to be. So let's, let's go into our prayer time now and then we'll finish, uh, <coughs> we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer here in just a minute. So pray with me. O oh, gracious and wonderful God, we praise you and adore you as we recognize how much we need you. We thank you for our very lives and our world. We ask for your wisdom as we go about our daily lives. We ask you to open our ears and eyes so that we may recognize your call and be able to answer it. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button and go into a moment of silent prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, for all that you do for us. And it's just, uh, it's just so great we can't even begin to imagine it as we look back and see the things you've been doing and, and uh, see uh, uh, how you act all the time and, and the splendor of which you display yourself and the goodness of everything that you do, Lord. It's just uh, help us to, to, uh, to uh, as we live in this world of bad news, everywhere there's bad news, help us to look on the, on the bright side. Help us to look to you. Help us to look to your goodness and kindness and love, Lord, as, as we try to uh, bask in your splendor, Lord. We thank you and we love you. Lord, today we'd like to bring up some people to you and we ask that you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. 
We're thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world. Uh, they're always there, Lord, and help us to minister to them somehow. We ask that you be with uh, 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 our leaders of this country and in other countries, Lord, as, as they need you more than anything else and, and help them to find you. Lord, we ask that you be with our troops wherever they may be. We ask that you be in our communities, Lord, as, as we uh, are starting harvest here in, in North Dakota and, and just to be, keep everyone safe and bring, us, bring them back to us again next week. Lord, we... We have many, many other people in our minds, Lord, and you know each and every one of them. Lord, and we ask that you address each and every one of these in ways that are pleasing to you, Lord. And we just thank you and love you and, and shout out praise to you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from John 6. John 6, 51 uh, through 58. So uh, if you have your Bibles handy, turn there. John 6, uh, 51 through 58. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, and remember when you hear that phrase, I tell you the truth, you listen to what comes in next. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and, will, and I will raise him up at the, at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, and he who feeds on this bread will live forever. These are the words of God for the people of God, and all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you once again, and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds, and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as I switch gears here a little bit, we should get going here. Uh, are you hungry? I remember a few years back when I would just sit and be amazed at all the changes that my folks had seen in their lifetime. They came from a time when there was no electricity, horses were still the mainstays of the family farm, there was no refrigerators, no TVs, no microwave ovens, no telephones, let alone cell phones. Uh, and now look what all we have today. Look at around you. I'm beginning to wonder about all the changes that I have seen in my lifetime. Electronics and computers have changed everything we do. One of the great benefits of all this technology is we have become more and more aware of our bodies. Some of our best, some of our best selling books in this country are health food books, cookbooks, and of course, diet books. Everyone wants to be slimmer and, uh, than they are, and they also want to be healthier and live longer. Uh, we even had a former heavyweight boxing champion of the world who comes on our TV sets and tries to sell us a grill so we can have uh, healthier hamburgers. We have uh, Olympic athletes telling us how we can be healthier probably by exercising, you know, 30 hours a day. Uh, everywhere we look, people are trying to make us healthier. Uh, do any of these things work? You know, I don't know, I don't know. Years ago, there was a runner named Jim Fix who was convinced that everyone should jog. He was probably the, um, the major player in starting the jogging revolution around the country. He died young of a heart attack. I don't know if any of this makes any difference at all. But I do know one thing. I know that the food that God gives you will make a huge difference in your lives. Huge difference. Let's see if we can follow Jesus a little on this one. I would like to begin today with a brief story from Dr. Morris 
uh, Rawlings, who was a devout atheist. He was also a cardiology and professor of medicine at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and he wrote a book called To Hell and Back. Uh, we have read stories, or maybe we have lived, li uh, lived them uh, ourselves about how people describe near-death experiences. They always talk about, you know, the bright light or the lush green meadows or, or something similar that's very peaceful. Uh, Talk about, they talk about seeing their relatives that, who have died. Dr. Rawlings took this a step further as he interviewed 300 patients who had died and then been, uh, and been resuscitated. He interviewed viewed them right after the resuscitation before they had a chance to think about their answers. He found that nearly 50% of the people interviewed reported lakes of fire and brimstone. There were devil-like figures in other sites that could only come from the darkness of hell. Later, these people would change their stories uh, because they were ashamed to admit that they had been in hell. Uh, this completely changed Dr. Rawlings, and he is no longer an atheist. Uh, I don't think that it's our job to go out and find an atheist to convert. Uh, there are too many other people around who have not heard the message that need ministering to before we get to the atheists who have already made up their minds. They don't want to go to heaven and that's their decision. Jesus is telling us that he is the way to heaven. He is the living bread that came down from heaven. The people who Jesus is trying to reach here are having a hard time hearing the message. Uh, we have had 2,000 years now of hindsight so that we think we understand things a lot better. To these ancient people, they think that Jesus is telling them to eat his body. Even today, we have people who read this and think of some sort of cannibalism. Usually, these kinds of people are just trying to stir things up and make trouble. One of the problems in the Bible is that the writers used, and Jesus used, a lot of different ways to say things. Uh, he, he, they used poetry, metaphors, parables, and many other forms of writing. Jesus is being symbolic here, uh, but the people don't understand. They continue to gripe and say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They are blinded and they don't want to see. People didn't understand in the days of Jesus and they don't understand today either. I recently had a conversation with a person who seemed to know more about the Bible than anyone I had ever met. The only trouble was he'd never read the Bible. He had relied on second, third, fourth hand information. Not only that, but he lifted uh, verses out of context and used them. He had a total mishmash of misinformation. The only thing he was sure about, and he was positive, is, was that I was stupid and wrong, and he was absolutely right. Uh, there was no one in this world that would change his mind. This per this person uh, didn't understand. Uh, when you find a person like this, all you can do is plant a seed and move on to someone else. Too many other people are waiting to hear from you, to hear the message. Anyway, Jesus is telling us in black and white here that he is a living bread that came down from heaven, okay? If anyone eats of this bread, uh, they shall live forever. Jesus has come to us willingly so that the world may have life. Unfortunately, the world does not know Jesus as we read in, in John 1.10, which says, He was in the world, and though the world uh, was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Uh, John 1.10. Uh, the people in the time of John were no different than we are today. They were searching for the meaning of life. Uh, they were, uh, if you were fortunate enough, uh, unfortunate enough, I mean, to be born in, as a peasant, you would probably stay a peasant and the meaning of your life would just be some sort of existence. Even though we like to deny this as much as possible, things are much the same way today. Uh, we like to glorify the few who make it out of poverty, but the majority of those born in poverty will stay there. Uh, very unfortunate. Those, for those people who are not in poverty, they are searching everywhere for the meaning of life. In the time of John, there were many, many different religions that just did not satisfy anyone. We know this because people would just go from one religion to another. They would hop around. People do this today. Uh, they couldn't find satisfaction in anything they did because there is no satisfaction in false religions. 
we have the same thing happening today. As I mentioned, uh, an atheist, uh, I mentioned an atheist earlier here, as a little sidebar here, when you think about it, what could be sadder? What could be sadder than an atheist who believes in nothing? At least if you're following, you know, crystals or pyramids or some other goofy thing, you believe in something even if it's false, okay? Uh, anyway, people make gods of money, they make gods of TV, they make gods of our government. All these things are false and will lead to a crash. Uh, these are the lives of people in our world who have the money and the power. They chase falseness. Remember that, that they're chasing falseness. Now let's look at our poor people. We have nations where people are oppressed and hungry for food. There are millions and million pe millions of people out there whose only meaning in life is to get enough food for the day. These are the places where Christianity is the strongest. And the reason for that is that Jesus Christ gives them hope where there should be none. Jesus can be seen out there helping the people who need the help the most. Uh, it isn't very often that you'll see Jesus in a corporate board meeting or as a, in a jet setter yacht party. Uh, these people uh, think they have the world by the tail, but they don't, we know that. But the person who is hungry, who is hungry is much more likely to see the hand of Jesus working in his life than one who has riches. Uh, I know that when I was down and out, Jesus gave me his hand and helped me out of my own personal quagmire. That is the hope we have in Jesus Christ. If you find yourself searching for the meaning of life, then listen for that still voice of Jesus. Confess your sins to him and ask him to live in your life as Lord and Savior. There is no need to search. There is no need to look because Jesus is right in front of you all the time, or he's beside you, or he's right close, or he's in you. Even if you don't love him yet, he still loves you tremendously. Now, we get to the area where it might be a little bit scary. If you are searching for this meaning, what is the cost to you when you find it? Uh, if Jesus, who, it is Jesus who's talking here today in this reading, therefore he has not gone to the cross yet, but we know the, the cost Jesus paid was his life. We have watched videos uh, that depict the final hours. We read about this every year at, at Easter. The cost was very high for Jesus. So, what is the cost for us? What is the cost for you? The people who are listening to Jesus recognize the reference to the living bread. This would be the manna that God provided for Moses and the people of the Exodus. If you remember, God provided manna so that people can make it into some type of bread or something. He also provided quail and water so they could have meat and some water. In other words, God provided them with life. Um, they would still die eventually, but they had not they had life for now, okay? Jesus is telling the people that he is the living bread. He is the living manna. If we eat of this living bread, then we will live for eternity. We will not die. That's a promise. It's over and over in the Bible. What they don't know yet is that to have this living bread, Jesus will have to die on a cross. Would anyone here today like some of this living bread? My guess is that many of you have already he eaten of this wonderful meal. We aren't cannibals uh, because this is just a figure of speech and we know that. Now, there are, uh, now, now here are some of the costs that we can expect if we take or don't take the living bread. Now listen, Bobby is serving a 20 year sentence for armed robbery. Mary is serving 11 year sentence sentence for armed robbery and will be deported at the end of the sentence. Patricia serves a 10 year sentence for embezzlement. Sandra is serving a life sentence for murder. There were, at the, at the time of this story, there were 5,300 inmates housed in the prison known as Angola in Louisiana. Uh, that is the bad news, okay? The good news was that there was from 12 to 1,500 inmates who had been born again after they had been locked up. Every person I mentioned wished that they had the living bread before they committed their crime. These people are paying a high cost of not following Jesus. I don't think we pay such a high price, but we do pay a price. 
we can all look back on the things we did before we knew Jesus and see what our personal price has been. Uh, it may be about, uh, uh, about with drugs or alcohol or a bad marriage or dabbling in things you shouldn't or maybe just uh, the sense of searching, a sense of being lost or many, many different things that could happen here. But no matter what the cost has been to you, it pales, absolutely pales in comparison to the cost of those who continue not to know Jesus until they die. The price they pay will be eternal damnation. The reason I mentioned the people who had visited hell in our opening story today is because there are so many people who don't believe in hell but still say they believe in, in heaven. You must believe in hell if you believe in heaven. That's just the way it is. I just wanted to try to demonstrate that hell is a real place, very, very real, and we don't want anyone to go there. So far, we have discovered many are searching for God, and there is a price uh, when we accept him or not. Uh, I say that uh, I say they are searching for God because I feel that all people are supposed to be connected to God. All people are supposed to be connected to God. Uh, God made all people like this. Therefore, uh, all people seek God. If we, were, if we are not connected, then we are searching for what non-believers call a meaning of life or some other such thing, whatever it is. In actuality, they are searching for God and they don't even know it. So when you hear someone who's searching to find themselves or something like that, they are really searching for Jesus and they don't even know it. This all has to do with the last point I wanna to make today. We all have a hunger for Jesus. Um, the free thinkers and woke people of Fargo have an acute hunger for Jesus, but their brains get in the way and they look in the total opposite direction. Three quarters of the inmates in Angola prison have a hunger for Jesus, but they don't have a clue as to what this means. We have uh, the people who wanted, uh, the, wanted want to so-called reform the church so it's more like society, have a great hunger for Jesus, but they've lost their faith if they ever had it. You and I sitting here today, wherever you are, have a hunger for Jesus. You are so hungry that you come here every Sunday or listen to this every week uh, to read about him, to study him, and listen to his word. Our friends and neighbors who miss uh, church in the summer, uh, miss our sun summer services, will come back in a few weeks with a real hunger for Jesus. Everyone in the world has this hunger. Jesus, I, I mean, I can't make this any clear everyone in the world has a hunger for Jesus then the question becomes what are you going to do about this hunger I would like you to try two things uh, this fall and let me know uh, your results first of all I would like <clears throat> all of you to read through your Bibles uh, this in a year this year uh, that isn't uh, it isn't that hard if you just commit yourself to it take 10 minutes and, and do it there are Bibles that are laid out so you can read them throughout the year um, there are Bible studies that have guides in there to help you uh, uh, with reading the Bible and, and there are many suggestions on the internet I think this would be very good for you as you are out there in, in internet internet land and, and maybe in your church or whatever uh, talk to me about about this sometime if you have some questions the other thing I'd like to try is what I call love your neighbor I would like this to be a chance uh, uh, our chance to be the arms and legs, the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. At least once a month, I would like uh, you to choose someone or a family who is having a tough go of it and go and minister to them. When you, what you do depends upon the circumstance, of course. I think this would be a great way to reach out into your community with the love of Jesus Christ. When I was uh, ministering uh, at Calvary and Zion, we would get an anonymous $1,000 every month to give to the needy. And this is just in a small town. We never had money left over in this account. Uh, I think you have a hunger uh, if, if in the new church you're starting or in the church you're in. This is also uh, a hunger that's in your community. I know that, that uh, the, the church that I'm, uh, we're speaking to here is not very big and maybe yours isn't very big either but but th these are a couple of ways that you can help each other out and others um, even though you are small most of uh, the time Jesus was ministering when he was ministering to others they were in small groups of people uh, this is who we are Jesus loves us so much 
that he wants us to go in his name and help people to have a better life. He's got this wonderful plan for you and it's perfect in every way. Go to him now and go to him often. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. Well, gracious Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, as you, uh, as you help us and guide us through our lives, Lord. We ask that you help us to open our eyes and find the hurting around us and then go minister to them in your name, Lord, and add to our numbers, Lord. We thank you and praise you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This concludes our worship for this week. I thank you for being here. Uh, uh, and and uh, we'll be back next week and, and come and join us. Uh, and now for the benediction, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world that he made just for you, sharing his great glory, go in God's peace. And amen.